Hello. In this presentation, we will discuss sensorless model predictive direct power control strategies for PWM rectifier. The rectifier is used to convert AC into DC. You can find it in battery chargers, motor drives, trains, and many more. PWM rectifier uses a bridge of IGBTs with anti-parallel diodes. By controlling the on and off times of the IGBTs, we can achieve low distortion for the line current, smooth DC voltage, as well as unity power factor. Now, for the control of PWM rectifiers, we must first select our desired performance, measure the actual performance, and feed it to the control scheme. The control scheme then determines the most appropriate switching signal and feeds it to the PWM rectifier. We will talk about the control scheme in just a moment, but for now, let's talk about sensorless control. The problem with sensors is that they are expensive, they are heavy, and they can be a source of errors. So it is of our best interest to reduce the number of sensors. Now, if we look at the rectifier circuit, we can see that the line voltage is related to the remaining of the converter parameters. Now, if we assume that the line voltage is generated by virtual flux, we can then remove the line voltage sensors and replace them by virtual flux estimation. The problem with this estimation is the need to implement pure integrators. The problem with pure integrators is that they can cause DC offsets, and they're also known to be very sensitive to grid disturbances. Now, to overcome this problem, we have used second-order generalized integrators instead, which can achieve error-free integration by means of second-order filtering of the input signal. Now it's time to get back to the control scheme or strategy. Many control strategies have been developed for PWM rectifier. The one we're going to use today is model predictive direct power control. Here's how it works. First, we use a mathematical model of the rectifier to predict the future values of the active and reactive powers. Then, we describe the desired performance as a cost function to be minimized. In this case, we want to minimize the error between the reference and the predictive powers. Then we must find a control variable that minimizes this cost function. Once we find it, it will help us determine the most suitable switching pattern. Now, depending on the control variable, we can distinguish two types of model predictive control. The first uses the switching patterns themselves. It is called a finite control set because you can only have eight possible switching patterns. Now for CC for the other type of model predictive control, we use the converter voltage as control variable. It is called a continuous control set because the converter voltage is a continuous time variable. Then we must express the cost function in terms of the control variable for each type. And now it's time to minimize it. For FCS, we could just simply calculate the cost function for each state individually. We compare the values we get and the most suitable switching signal is the one that has the least or the smallest cost function. For CCS, since it's a continuous time model, we must find the converter voltage that makes its derivative go to zero. Once we find this converter voltage, we use a space vector pulse width modulation to generate the switching signal. Now let's talk about the most important differences between FCS and CCS. Well, the first and the most obvious is the control variable. And then there is 
the switch in frequency, which is variable for FCS and constant for CCS. The last different, important difference is number of computations. For, C, for FCS, we must perform at least seven iterations for each sampling period, when we only need to perform it once for CCS. Now, next, we have simulated the presented control strategies in Simulink MATLAB, and we have found the results under ideal and distorted networks, a step change in the reference DC voltage, and a step change in the load. The obtained waveforms were as follows. Now, for ideal network, we can see that FCS has better performance than CCS. It has a smoother DC voltage and a lower current distortion. But in general, both control strategies have great performance. You can see that the step response for the DC voltage is on spot and it can successfully overcome the low change disturbance. The current distortion is sufficiently low for both strategies as well. Now for distorted network, other than the slight ripples in DC voltage, there's hardly any change. The line current distortion is still low. And again, FCS still has better performance than CCS. So from that, we can conclude that although CCS has the upper hand when it comes to operating at constant switching frequency and having lower computations, FCS compensates for this balance with better performance. And overall, we can, it is safe to say that both control strategies of, of sensorless model predictive direct power control are indeed effective for the control of PWM rectifiers, where they offer great performance as well as high resistance to grid distortion. And that brings us to the end of our presentation. I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'd be happy to receive your questions.